So the topics for today's Learn Over Lunch webinar part three, Make the Most of Connections, Networking Strategies and Leveraging Career Fairs, include Get Networking to Work for You, the four parts to your pitch, eight excellent career fair tips, three recruiter recommendations, and finally the basics of the Big Apple, which is the job and internship fair coming up on April 22nd. So get networking to work for you. I think it's no secret to any of us that networking is one of the most crucial, if not the most crucial facets to a successful job search. And one of the reasons for that is the hidden job market. Um, the statistics change uh, here and there, but I've definitely read that anywhere from 70 to 80% of jobs are never posted on the job boards um, or on company websites. And that's because companies know that one of the best ways to find strong employees is through referrals. So that's sort of what we call the hidden job market. Um, and that's where networking comes into play and it being so important. I always mention when I'm talking about networking that it should be a two-way street. It should be a cyclical process where you are talking with others and others are talking to you. I think many of us have heard the phrase, it's not what you know, it's who you know. And I would add, and who knows you. So it's important to keep in mind that when you're networking and when you're talking with people about your career interests and your career and your professional background, that you allow the person that you're talking with to help you help them as well as help yourself. So the idea is that when you're talking with someone and having conversations about your career interests, your job search, your education, that you think about how you can ask the person for advice and ideas and pointers for your career and your job search versus I need a job. Can you help me get a job in your company? And what happens many times is if you have a conversation with someone or your career center refers you to someone to do an informational interview, if you reach out to that person and send your resume and say, can you send my resume in for this job at your company? And there are no jobs open at their company or it doesn't work out for that particular job, the relationship can end there. And the idea is that you build a rapport with that person so that they're happy to help you in the current situation and also in the future. And that's why I always describe networking as a two-way street where you're asking for advice and sharing ideas and sharing advice rather than asking them constantly to help you or to ask them for jobs. Some other things to keep in mind when you're trying to get networking to work for you is that many people find the whole idea and process of networking very stressful, very nerve wracking, and very daunting. So that's why I recommend networking without networking. And this is where you think of things like volunteering. If you work uh, as a volunteer at a hospital in the medical records department helping with filing projects as a volunteer, that gives you an opportunity to learn what they do in that department. It gives you an opportunity to meet the people who work in that department. And it also gives you a chance to dedicate your time to an organization. So you're basically networking within that organization, within the medical records field, without networking. And the idea whenever we say networking is not to attend networking events only. It's more to practice the art of networking and meeting people and building relationships and helping others with their job search without actually networking. Another important piece, which I think is also obvious, is social media. 
And this is where you think about when you meet a person in the context of a real life situation at a job fair, for instance, when you're volunteering through your community, through your son or daughter's school, through the PTA, on the bus, that you think about how you can use social media to support those relationships, particularly LinkedIn being the most powerful professional networking social media tool, is how can you leverage LinkedIn to work for you to help with your networking? Whether it's meeting someone new and sending them a request to connect with you on LinkedIn, or researching the interview, an interviewer that you have uh, scheduled an interview with the next day, or simply perusing different types of profiles on LinkedIn to get an idea for your own job search in similar fields. Social media can be a very, very valuable networking tool. And then the final piece about networking that I'll cover today are the actual networking events, hiring events, and obviously career fairs. Many of you attend um, school at some of the CUNY campuses and employers are eager to meet you. Um, they're, eager to, they're eager to talk with you about um, your career interests, to find out if you match the needs that they have in their organizations. And so many times they set up information sessions on your campuses. So that's obviously a great way to network. Even if you think it's early and you're not quite ready to you know, start considering full-time positions or even internships, it's a good idea to attend these kind of events if you have the opportunity to begin the relationships with those companies and representatives. And finally, career fairs. Um, these are probably one of the more traditional um, job search functions that everybody knows about, um, and they definitely can be challenging, but they're also still a really, really effective way to get to meet people, to learn about job and career opportunities, and to really build your network. So a lot of what today's webinar will cover is um, how to be successful with networking, as well as career fairs, and some specifics about the Big Apple Job and Internship Fair coming up in a few weeks. Don't forget to send your questions in for today's webinar, and I'll address them at the end of my, my remarks. Okay, before we move into too much having to do with career fairs, I thought it would be a good idea to discuss with you um, something that I call the personal pitch. Some of you may know this as the elevator pitch or uh, your 60 second pitch. The idea is that if you have an opportunity to talk with someone and meet someone and share with them sort of your professional background and interests, then that is what you might call your pitch. Originally it was an elevator pitch because if you were to get on the elevator with the CEO of your company and ride all the way to the top floor with that person, you would be able to use that time period to pitch that person about your background. So one of the simple ways that I think a pitch can be effective is if you break it down into four parts. The first of those, tell them what you're doing. As an example, I'm finishing my MS in Business Management and Leadership at CUNY SPS this June and I'm working currently as an HR assistant at a small manufacturing company in Brooklyn. The second part of your pitch, tell them what you were doing before what you were doing now. I had been working at my company for eight years as a receptionist until they moved me into HR when the company grew. My BA degree in art history didn't really give me a lot of business, operations, or strategy courses, so I decided to look for a graduate program that I could do online while I kept working. The third part of your pitch, tell them what you want to do next. Now that I'm almost done with my master's degree, I realize I've got potential to move up in my career, and I'm pursuing work related to compensation or benefits preferably in a larger organization. 
And then the final and fourth part of your pitch would be to tell them something memorable or unique about yourself and give a call for action. I just did the first ever analysis of spending on compensation and benefits at my company, and my research ended up saving almost $200,000. So I have a knack for that area of HR. How can I find out more about the current opening for a benefits specialist at your company? So once again, there were four parts to the personal pitch. And I think that if you use this sort of key when you're developing your own pitch, that it can be applied to pretty much any sort of industry or field and any level of your career. So number one, tell them what you're doing now. Number two, tell them what you were doing before now. Number three, tell them what you want to do next. And finally, number four, tell them something memorable about yourself and a call for action. And once again, these are sort of, you know, this is breaking down your personal pitch into a very simplistic um, way to approach it. But I think that this can be effective when you're talking with someone at an official hiring event or career fair, when you're answering a question in a job interview, tell me about yourself, or even when you meet someone new at a party or social gathering. This is a really good way to sort of organize your professional and personal pitch so that you come across as being focused and dedicated, but also it's easy for the person to understand and remember. So now I'll take some time and go over um, some preparation and some pointers for the Big Apple, the CUNY Big Apple Job and Internship Fair, which is coming up on Friday, April 22nd. Um, it's being held as it has in most recent years at the Jacob Javits Center in Manhattan on the west side from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. I'll go over a series of eight excellent tips for preparing for the CUNY job fair and any spring job fairs that you might be attended, attending for that matter. Tip number one, fairly obvious, polish your resume. Probably the best way to do that is to visit the career services office at your campus for help. Number two, edit your social media profiles. And this is something that's important for anyone, whether you are um, in the field of communications and media or you're studying something totally different where you might not necessarily think social media is so important, recruiters are definitely checking social media. And particularly if you are planning to use LinkedIn or other sites to follow up with people you meet at the job fair, it's extremely important that you present yourself positively on those social media profiles. Number three, research the employers, research the employers attending the fair. A recruiter will be able to tell if you've taken the initiative to really understand their organization. Go to the fair and have, have an idea of what that particular organization's goals are, what kinds of job openings they have, how you might fit into their organization, things like that. As of Monday, April 11th, um, the names of employers that will be attending the CUNY job fair will be posted online. So I encourage you to, once it's um, after April 11th, I encourage you to go to the website and check that out. Tip number four, create and practice your pitch to recruiters. In less than two minutes, tell why your skills and education and experience would be valuable to that organization. And I just went over those four parts to what I think make up a great pitch. So if you use that sort of as an example, you should be able to come up with your own pitch um, and then take a little bit of time to practice it before you attend the job fair. Tip number five. Be focused, but keep an open mind. And this is something to keep in mind when you're attending this job fair and any other job fairs, that sometimes an organization um, may not necessarily look appealing to you, but if you take a little bit of time and really research the kind of organization it is, perhaps they do have opportunities that are of interest. 
Um, the other thing to do is to come up with a strategy. Come up with a list of sort of your must-see companies and then your maybe would like to see companies and organize that depending on the ones that you know are specifically related to your interests and your qualifications and make sure that you meet them first and then use any remaining time you have at the fair to visit some of those other ones that might not necessarily be your direct focus but could still be interesting to talk with. Tip number six and this should hopefully be obvious, dress for success. Make sure that you present yourself professionally when you're meeting with the employers. Um, you know, it's one of the most important things when you are attending a professional event like this that um, you're dressed well. Um, and it may mean that you need to take a little bit of time a couple of days before and make sure that you have your wardrobe picked out and that you know which shoes you're going to wear that are comfortable but professional and so forth. So just make sure that you're preparing um, and that you do dress for success. The other thing is that you're dressed professionally. I think it tends to make you feel more confident. So the more prepared you are and how you feel about your appearance must mean that you'll be more confident when you're talking with the employers at the actual event. Number seven. Never ask what a recruiter has for you. When you attend the career fair, your job is to sell yourself to what you and what you can offer the employers, not the other way around. So this is important. And going back to one of the previous tips, make sure that you do your research and you have an understanding of what the organization's purpose is, what kinds of job and career opportunities they might be having available, so that you can use that time when you're there to talk with them about what you can offer them, rather than asking them to explain what they can offer you. And finally, tip number eight, follow up with recruiters. This is extremely important. Ask the recruiters for their business cards and after the fair, Send them professional, personal thank you letters for taking the time to meet with you. Make sure that you come up with something that will help them remember who you are and really just in general to get their attention again. Speaking of recruiters, here are three recommendations that have just generally come up in my experience when I'm talking with recruiters about about their ideas and how things are for them when they attend job fairs and which kinds of candidates tend to be most successful. This is a big one. Don't ask what an organization does or which jobs are currently available. Again, do your research in advance. You want to spend the valuable time you have there at the career fair talking about yourself. The recruiters are going to be more impressed if you can really prove that you've taken the time to research and understand what they do and what kinds of opportunities they have, and they'll feel that you're going to be a more capable potential employee, rather than if they need to repeat over and over and over again what their organization does and what kinds of job opportunities they have. This is a really, really important one. Another recruiter recommendation. Be aware that you may still need to apply online. Um, and this is some feedback that we've heard from students and alumni attending the job fairs in the past. Employers go to the job fair and they meet you, but they won't take your resume. Even if they won't accept a resume at the, at the job fair, be aware that they still may be taking notes of the strongest candidates that they meet. These organizations definitely have to follow strict employment laws and guidelines, and many of them find that the only way they can accurately and legally track applicant data is to have everyone submit their application online. So if that's the case, do as the employer instructs you, and then follow up. Ask if you can have a business card. Agree to apply online to the particular position and then follow up with them and explain that you met them at the job fair, you're very eager to find out more about the organization and let them know that you have applied as they told you. It makes it more challenging certainly for, um, for you as a job seeker at a job fair if they won't take the resume, but 
it's just something with sort of the way that things work with hiring processes today. I think it works in your favor if you just agree with it, ask for a business card, and hopefully follow up later on. The third and final recruiter recommendation is that, again, make sure you follow up and be strategic. Many, many job seekers, they prepare ahead of time, they bring resumes to job fairs, they wear their best professional attire, they go and they meet all sorts of recruiters at the job fair, and then it ends there. It is incredibly important to take that final step and contact recruiters you've met and remind them of the conversation that you've had. Reiterate how much you're interested in their organization and how you would be of value to them. Be confident when you're following up with them and use tools like LinkedIn to stay connected with those recruiters. As I had said about networking, just because someone doesn't have a job opportunity that's appropriate for you right now, it doesn't mean that in a month or two months or six months, they won't have something that is appropriate. So it's important to follow up with those recruiters, be strategic about it, use LinkedIn to stay connected, and you never know how there might be something positive that comes about from that effort you make. It's very surprising how many job seekers attend job fairs, but they don't take that final step in following up. So here's my advice to you, definitely make sure that you do so. Okay, so now I'll go over some of the basics of the Big Apple. Um, once again, the CUNY Big Apple Job and Internship Fair, it's on Friday, April 22nd at the Javits Center in the west side of Manhattan from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. The website, um, which is where I encourage all of you to go to get lots of information, is cuny.edu slash Big Apple. And from there, you'll be able to, as of April 11th, see the list of employers attending, uh, you'll be able to find um, also a list of CUNY's various graduate and professional schools that will be there talking with prospective students. There are lots more tips for success on the website. And then, of course, more details about the date, the time, the location, requirements for attendance, and so forth. The last thing that you see on the bottom of this slide is the hashtag CUNY Job Fair. I encourage all of you to use that hashtag and search out with that hashtag because all of the career centers and employers and others will be using that um, pertaining to the CUNY Job Fair on across social media platforms. So if you take the time to use that hashtag as well, you may find that it's a good way to learn more about the event and also a good way to connect with employers and share your own information about attending the job fair. Um, in just a moment, we're gonna go ahead and get started on um, answering some of your questions that have come in, but I just wanted to once again remind you that the Big Apple Job Fair is coming up Friday, April 22nd, and um, from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m., and um, I encourage CUNY students and alumni to attend this event. It's always a well-attended popular event for um, you know, for the employers, and I know that they look forward to this event and then the opportunity to meet with CUNY's finest. So, you know, I encourage all of you to attend that particular event. Um, at this point, I'm going to go ahead and ask Kelsey Richardson, our career advisor, to um, begin helping me out with sharing some of the uh, questions that have come in for um, today's webinar. Kelsey, are you there? Yes, thank you, Shannon. Thank you for sharing such great tips about networking and job fairs um, with everyone. Um, we definitely have some questions coming in, and um, I actually wanted to start with one question that um, is, what is the substance of the interaction with an organizational representative at the career fair beyond giving them your pitch? Like how long does the interaction tend to last? Well, that's a good question. Um, particularly if you've never attended a job fair in the past, it can be difficult to tell for sure. 
Um, one of the things that I think is important to keep in mind is that each organization is probably going to approach the job fair differently. Um, but generally, you know, this particular event especially, it's pretty crowded. It's pretty, um, you know, it's a large scale event. So when you walk up to a booth or a table and you shake the hand of a recruiter and you introduce yourself and provide them with your, with your pitch, they likely may have a couple of follow-up questions to ask of you. Um, or they may say, you know, it's nice to meet you. Thank you for visiting our booth. What questions do you have for me? And I would say that after that, um, you know, it's probably not going to be, a, you know, a 15, 20 minute extensive conversation. However, I have heard previously that some recruiters, if they find a candidate to be of particular interest, they may step aside with them and ask them some more specific, more interview types of questions. So. And that's where I think that doing your research ahead of time can really um, help you to be best prepared. The other thing to keep in mind is that if an employer sort of seems like they're trying to move things along quickly, follow their lead and ask for a business card and follow up. Um, hopefully that answers the question. It's a little hard to tell because I think, like I said, some organizations are going to approach the job fair differently than others. Thank you, Shannon. Uh, so our next question is, what type of resume format is appropriate to bring to a career fair if you have like over 10 years of experience? Is it okay to have more than one page for your resume? Well, that's a good question. Um, I think that, you know, it can be if you have extensive work experience, it can be okay to have more than one page of a resume. But at the job fair, it, it can be, um, a little bit chaotic for lack of a better term and I think that if there's a way to you know really condense the information on your resume as best you can I would say to err on the side of it being um, more brief than it being too long um, again I think reaching out to your career services center on your respective campus and talking with them about what makes most sense for your resume is probably a good way to go about it. You do have, um, you know, more than two weeks in advance of the job fair to prepare. And I think that if you take some time to really, again, research the employers that are attending and figure out how to make your resume specific to those organizations, um, that's probably the best course of action to take. But again, I think it really depends on, you know, your particular background and what types of jobs you're interested in and how much um, and how lengthy your resume is. Great. Thank you, Shannon. Now, um, related to this, um, is it appropriate to bring a cover letter to a career fair and offer the cover letter in addition to a resume? Well, you know, thanks for asking this one. It's, um, I think this is a question that we typically hear every year. Um, and I actually, I don't recommend cover letters for um, attending a job fair um, for a couple of reasons. Number one, um, you know, cover letters in general for job search are most effective when they're tailored and specific to a job. Um, and when you're attending a job fair, it's pretty difficult to do a cover letter that's going to be tailored and specific for each and every job you're applying for, particularly if that company has just sort of open-ended opportunities. The other problem with cover letters, I believe it, at career fairs is that it's chaotic enough and recruiters are, you know, they're trying to sort of stay organized and meet candidates and you want to help them be able to remember you. So I think it it sometimes can bog things down if they have additional paperwork and cover letters to review. My advice instead of a cover letter would be to come up with some sort of pitch or focused profile or statement to include on the top of your resume that describes uh, your interests, your background, and so forth in summary form, and use that on the top of your resume rather than trying to come up with cover letters and providing additional papers when you're meeting with recruiters at the fair. Kelsey, feel free to jump in if you have anything to add on some of these questions. Sure, sure, absolutely. Um, no, I, 
in complete agreement about cover letters. It's less is more in terms of, you know, not including cover letters and just focusing on that resume and definitely having a summary or some type of statement at the top of the resume is really helpful uh, to the recruiters to be able to get a sense of what skills and experience you have to offer. Great, thank you. Um, so another person was wondering if it's okay to give your business card to the recruiters at the job fair in addition to your resume. Well, that's a good question. Um, you know, I think that if you're referring to a business card that you use with your current employer, I, I don't think it makes a lot of sense to provide that. Um, if you're attending a job fair and you're looking for a job, it, it doesn't make a lot of sense to be using the business card that you have currently. However, many, um, many would advise a job seeker to create a sort of a personal business card that includes a little bit of information. It has your contact information, maybe the link to your social media, your LinkedIn profile, um, your email address, maybe even your pitch. And if you created that kind of uh, personal business card, that might be a really nice um, thing to share with recruiters, particularly if they are not willing to accept a resume document at the career fair. If you've created your own personal business card, that could be something that you could provide to them instead. Thank you, Shannon. Um, now we have another question about, um, you know, a, a student's wondering what advice you would give them for their pitch if they have little or no experience to offer an employer yet? Well, I think that, you know, this is probably something because um, we are talking many times about students, um, underclassmen, students. I think that if you don't have a lot of work experience to cite in your pitch, that you draw from other experiences. You can certainly talk about your classes if you've done any academic projects, if you've participated in any leadership activities, either at your college or even prior to that in high school. You can also talk about other types of experiences you have, even things like retail, babysitting, summer jobs. Those kinds of experiences can still be valuable to a potential employer if you're able to articulate what you've learned from them and how you believe they make you a good qualified candidate. So I think it's important to, you know, not just draw from and think about work experiences, but other experiences that you're able to articulate that still prove you have certain skill sets and competencies. Great. Thank you, Shannon. Um, we have another question. Um, a student is saying that they're a new nurse and they're wondering how they can appeal to a recruiter at the job fair with limited experience who may not have worked with nurses as much? Uh, I'm not sure I understand exactly. Um, the, the person doesn't have a lot of experience. Well, the, per the student is a new nurse and they're wondering how to appeal to a recruiter um, w uh, when they have limited experience as a nurse. Well, I think that some of the important things to keep in mind, and this goes back to your preparation in advance of the job fair, because if you've taken the time to learn what the organization does and what kinds of career opportunities they have, if you're able to talk with that recruiter and explain, here's the job opportunity I saw listed on your website and here's how I qualify, it's actually an opportunity for you to really prove yourself how much you've done your homework and how prepared and focused you are as a job seeker. I think that that's something that, um, you know, may come up from time to time at job fairs because many times employers will, they, they may not send someone who is particularly experienced in the specific field area. They may send someone who's a human resources or a recruiter, or they may send someone who's a department manager that um, wouldn't be familiar with all of the specifics about the different jobs open across that company, but would have a general idea about the company. And that's where I think, again, your research comes into play, where you're actually able to educate them on how you meet the particular needs at their organization. 
hopefully that addresses the question. Yes, thank you, Shannon. And, and what you were saying also about um, when you were answering the other question of a student with limited experience, you know, um, for anyone who's a new nurse as well, um, talking about your academic credentials, your leadership experience, um, all of all of your, your volunteer efforts, you know, all of those things are definitely very helpful as well when um, you are speaking with a recruiter and you're trying to give them a sense of your experience. Yep, absolutely. Um, so we have another question about the pitch. Um, now, this student uh, says that their current job isn't something they would necessarily want to put in their pitch. Um, okay. So how else could they address part one of the pitch? Well, I think if you're a current student, then you focus on what you're studying. Um, maybe talk, you know, not only mention what the degree program is, but talk about a couple of, you know, the courses that you have done particularly well in or courses that rate, relate specifically to um, your job search or the types of jobs that you're looking for. Um, and I, I think that, you know, if you're working part time or if you're working in a field that's unrelated, you don't necessarily have to include that information. Um, you may just focus more on the education or you may say, I'm working in a field unrelated, um, but I'm here today because I'm looking to make a career transition into such and such field. Um, that's one thing about your pitch is that you really have the ability to control the information that you're providing to the person in the pitch and really that's why it makes sense to practice it and put it together in advance so that you're able to really focus it and be strategic about what you're telling a recruiter or what you're not telling a recruiter. Great, thank you. Now um, another student has a question about the um, general networking tips that you were going over at the beginning of the webinar. Um, you were mentioning about volunteering as one of the ways to network without networking. And the question is, what other ways can you network without networking? That's a good question. And I, networking is such a big sort of um, heavy topic that it's hard to do um, too much content on networking in a short amount of time. but. I think that some of the other things um, that I that I referred to in terms of networking without networking can be as simple as within your classes. Um, many CUNY students are working while attending school, so one of the easy ways to meet people that are in different types of professions um, is simply to talk with your classmates. Um, so that can be a really easy way to sort of network without networking because you're in a learning environment with that person where it's not necessarily where you're thinking all the time about um, professional connections, but it can be sort of a non-threatening way to get to know people. I also would, um, you know, think about things like church or community activities as being a way to network without networking. Um, many times people will attend a birthday party or go to a barbecue. It's starting to, hopefully, <laughs> with the exception of today, it's starting to get warmer. And when you start attending sort of social events, it can always be a way where you might not necessarily want to talk about your job search the whole time, but if you do talk with someone new, many times one of the first things that comes into the conversation is, what do you do? So if you're able to figure out ways to sort of network at those types of social situations that are not necessarily professional centered, it can be an easy non-threatening way to network without networking. Am I missing any other big ones, Kelsey? Um, no, I, I think that that's great. Um, I'm just also thinking that along the lines of uh, socially kind of reaching out to people, um, you know, pursuing your hobbies and, you know, joining a book club or, you know, if you, um, if you want to take dance lessons or anything like that, I mean, keep in mind that the people that you meet who share hobbies with you may also have similar career interests or may have other contacts that they would want to introduce you to after you get to know them. Yeah, absolutely. Great. Thank you, Shannon. Um, so um, another question we have coming in is about actually informational interviewing and wondering if there are some tips on how to go about 
informational interviewing? Sure. Um, I, I want to be mindful of time, but I'll talk a little bit about informational interviewing in the, in the context of, of networking and sort of using that as a way to build relationships. Um, the idea, for those of you who haven't heard of informational interviewing, the idea is more of less of a job interview and more of a sort of a fact-finding mission. Um, many times, for example, if your career advisor sets you up on an informational interview with someone who works in a field that you're interested in, the idea is to meet with that person and get ideas, get advice from them, ask them how they got their start, ask them what they like or maybe what they don't like so much about their work. Find out from them what was successful when they first started looking for jobs. Um, you know, basically getting advice and getting ideas about what was successful for them. And the thing about informational interviews is that most people really enjoy talking about themselves. So if you can get the opportunity to ask them to answer questions about their own career and their own success within their chosen fields, it can be a very useful exercise for you to learn what would be most useful for you. And sometimes one of the things with informational interviewing is it can be the foundation for a more long-term relationship. And when I talked about, you know, it being a two-way street, you may very well find that that person is interested in learning from you as well. So I think that, you know, those are, that's sort of the gist of informational interviewing. The other thing that I think is useful about informational interviewing is that the idea is not to ask about jobs, but if down the line an informational interview turns into more of a long-term professional relationship, that person may be more apt to pick up the phone when they do hear of a job opportunity for you because they've had a chance to get to know you and understand what kinds of things you're looking for. And that's where sort of it being a help me, help you relationship comes into play. Um, I could probably spend an entire webinar talking about informational interviews, but hopefully that gives you a general idea of what it is and sort of how it works. Great. Thank you, Shannon. Um, so that was actually the final question that we have for now, um, unless there's anybody who uh, wants to send in one more. <laughs> we'll give a couple of minutes. Um, I will take just this final minute to review once more um, the de details for the CUNY Big Apple Job and Internship Fair, Friday, April 22nd, 11 to 2 at the Javits Center. Um, that is in Manhattan. You can find out all the details, more tips. Um, the employer list will be posted starting April 11th um, and so forth. Uh, the website is just cuny.edu slash Big Apple. Um, you know, definitely I encourage you to go to the website in advance of the job fair so that you're able to best prepare yourself. And um, hopefully you've, you've all been able to um, find out something new and worthwhile from today's webinar. Kelsey, anything else coming through? No, nothing else coming through. Okay, wonderful. Well, I wanted to thank all of the attendees that joined us today. Um, I also wanted to thank Kelsey Richardson and Anthony Sweeney for providing technical support and emceeing the questions and answers for today's webinar. I wish all of the attendees the best of luck in your networking. Um, and of course, if you're planning to attend the Big Apple Job and Internship Fair, best of luck with your job search.